Welcome back to the Tales of St. Gwen. Today we will look at the Palace of Slanish. And so to begin. I had now spent months on the Inquisitor's Scully vessel, being taken to remote planets that I couldn't even pronounce. Many were desolate worlds, some ruined by battles with chaos, other were pleasure worlds that could have possible taintage and their decadence, all of them, related to the chaos god Slanish. Inquisitor, I spoke one morning, standing next to him as we looked upon the green, lush pleasure world. I know that being here on these worlds has a purpose, but at this moment I fail to see it. Yesterday I watched the Duke feed the maid grapes. It was disgusting. The Inquisitor gave me a smirk before speaking. You've seen this decadence firsthand? I have. It's horrific, if I'm being honest. But you do see it, yes? I do. Why show me this? Have you observed any actions that haven't been just normal decadence? I do wish you would stop talking in such a cryptic way, I said. It exhausts me. Answer my question. No, nothing beyond normal decadence, I said, using my fingers as air quotes. But even as I said it, I slowly remembered something. The Inquisitor smirked at me, motioning for me to follow. I did so, remembering when I had opened the door and witnessed a gruesome orgy. I had shut the door so fast, so I wouldn't throw up. Your first battle was against the demons of the Pleasure God, yes? Yes, sir, I said, walking with him. I had my past commander's neural whip attached to my side instead of a pistol, and it turned heads as we walked through the crowd of people. A pleasure cult burst up through the warp and brought a war upon that planet. You don't need to tell me I was there. Yes, the Inquisitor said, now walking indoors. Since then you have fought in many battles. Learn the signs. But today we have something special. I don't understand, I replied. Your cryptic way of speaking truly annoys me. Not as much as our tech priest. He sounds like he just went through the desert of Hethgard. Inquisitor laughed, nodding. Then I shall stop being cryptic. Not many have been in the warp and returned without their minds muddled and fewer have been to the realm of chaos or their gods, and survived. We know so little about the lands that the demons live in before they push through the warp, but today we have a chance to learn. Scully opened the door, startling the thin and frail man inside. I observed him as we walked into the room, how he trembled in the shackles that held him to the chair. This is Peter. Scully said, closing the door behind us. And he has done something not few have. He has been to Slanisha's palace and returned. I raised an eyebrow at the man. Is that so? It is, Peter said, looking down. I will tell you everything I know. I have already told you this. And knelt down so we were eye to eye. How did you get there? That... That I don't know. One minute I was here on this planet indulging in pleasures. The next I was there. That's a disappointing answer, I said, standing up. What else? Peter looked between me and Scully, and Scully nodded for him to continue. When I arrived in the Outermar Circle, six circles in total, Peter said, each ring threw different things at you, and in the center was his palace. What happened in these rings? Each one is different. The first one was full of riches, more riches than any one man or woman could possess, but I noticed that some of the riches were that of others who had come before me, so I left the riches and carried forward. Keep going, I said, recording everything as if it was an interrogation. The second held feasts I had never imagined. Food for my home world that has long since been gone, that I thought I would never see again, but 
I didn't want to eat it. Why not? The smell of the food was that of rotting corpses, and I feared I would get sick. The third ring had many, many women and men bound in leather, gagged, bound with... I don't want to hear about your sexual desires. I cut them off. Why not join them? They seemed to shiver, shimmer, when I moved towards them, so I was afraid to approach. Good thing, too, because when I left the circle, I heard this screaming that wasn't human. Demons on masquerade, Inquisitor Scully spoke. Yes, that was my thought as well. The next was more of a feeling, a feeling of power that I could topple any opponent in my race to power that my opponent would fall to me. This felt too good to be true, as it never happened before, so I ran. You still have two more rings to tell, I said. The fifth was seeing my own victories, but my own mind was bombarded with my failures, and I felt myself stumble back till I managed to fall out of that ring. The last one seemed to promise me eternal rest. The feeling of sleepiness was taking hold of me, but my body was still panicked, so I ran through the ring. And then, what happened when you reached the palace? I was welcomed in, Peter said, his eyes glossing over. I met him. The great Prince Laniche. What did he look like? The Inquisitor pressed. Young, youthful, clean of limbs, beautiful. Without hesitation, I pulled my whip off my hip, decapitating Peter's head from his body. The blood spattled against the marble floor, a pool forming under his head. "'Don't you think he could have been saved?' the Inquisitor asked, though not condemning my actions. "'His soul was already gone,' I said, not even looking at the body. "'No amount of saving could change that. No one looks upon evil such as that and keeps his soul.' Now you understand why we've stayed on this planet. Yes, this planet is an opening, a portal to its realm, whether they realize it or not. The only question now is what we do about it, Inquisitor Scully said, leaving the room with me. Is there any chance of saving any of the residents? I asked, walking with him. We have no idea how far this spread. And Scully said. I paused at the wall of glass windows, looking out upon the green of the planet, but my eyes focused on a woman. I recognized her from the orgy, though she was wearing far more clothes than before. As she moved, the fabric of her top moved back and forth, and with enough work I was able to piece together what the symbol was. Far, I answered him my eyes not leaving the woman. She joined a group and started to chat with the residents. Inquisitor and I returned to the ship that night, trying to decipher how far the reach the pleasure cult could have. That woman, I said, I saw her in that room. Countess Lori, Inquisitor said, pulling her up on his data pad. If an extended vacation, she sees money as if it's expendable. Hundreds of dollars in champagne, and the best sweet booked trout for months. And you sure she has that mark? I know that mark better than some. I have killed many demons of that following, and even more cultists. She has his mark. I was speaking of Slanish, but kept the name out of my mouth. How many do you think is enthralled with her? I honestly cannot tell you, but I'm sure our presence has accelerated her timeline. I need more than a rumor, a feeling. And here I thought Inquisitors needed no reason, only signs. Scully put the pad down, now fixing me with a cold stare. While I understand the resources I have been given, the firepower that some dream of, I do not take it in stride. If we can weed the god instead of destroying it, I'd rather not waste life. The question is, can we weed the garden? The next morning I spent in penance for my words, stuck interviewing the people of the planet. 
from high-paid politicians to the maid service, I sat across from each person, listening to their decadent lives. You see, sister, a portly count spoke, his piggy eyes making me twitch. The luxuries of life should not be hoarded. They should be given to everyone. Is that why you invited a dozen of the maid staff back to your room? You say that as if it's a bad thing. I am only trying to share what I have with those less fortunate. The cold glare I gave him seemed to unnerve him. He shifted uneasily in his seat, looking around. Have you ever invited Countess Lorry to your room? I asked, having to calm myself. No, but I have been invited to hers many times. And did you go? I failed to see why a sister needs to know my sexual escapades. I just need to know if you went. Oh, is this sister looking for something freaky? Perhaps looking for someone with a key to that chastity belt? His hand slithered towards me and I finally broke. With a quick motion, I stabbed my knife into the table a centimeter away from his hand. His girlish scream could be heard throughout the resort, but I didn't flinch. Answer my question. Did you, or did you not, accept Countess Laurie's invitation? No, I have no interest in her. Then leave. The Count scurried out of the room, fear evidence in his face. My fingers drummed over the table, knowing far well my late commander would have hated how I acted. After interviewing all the staff and guests, I went back to the ship, creating a board to work off of. In the morning, I was rewarded by the sounds of grinding gears and a sandpaper voice. Trying to find the weeds? Tim asked. I see you have yet to fix your voice modulator. Perhaps I enjoy the agony it gives you. Sadistic tech priest, I said, glaring at the board. I have found more weeds than I originally imagined. Some claim they have been to the countess's room, some lied, some are proud of it. Violax, all of them, Tim replied. Would a simple weed job be enough to save the planet? With this many having visited her chambers, I don't think so. Both of us fell silent, the heavy boots of the Inquisitor walking in to look at our work. Is this all the people who visit her to chambers? he asked, holding a cup of recaf. As far as I can tell, I said, rubbing my forehead, I don't think this can be fixed with a simple kill order. No. You are correct in your prediction, Scully said, taking a sip of his drink. This garden has a lot of weeds, but be let this be a lesson. Do not act within feelings. Act on facts. It is your call, Tim said, nodding at Scully. Scully looked over the two of us, seeing the bags under my eyes. I will send word, Scully said. Exterminators might be our only option. Gwen, get some recaf. You look like shit. I scoffed at his words, but grabbed a cup nonetheless. I watched as we left the planet's orbit far enough away to do an orbital bombardment. I sipped my coffee as I watched the lush green planet turned into a dead world, almost hearing the screams of those on the planet. Their metaphorical screams were interrupted by sandpaper. Was there not a single soul worth saving? I thought back to my interviews, the decadence that the planet held. Even if we had been able to weed out the cult, it only resurface again and again because of the acts of the citizens. There were no souls left to save. Thank you for coming to this tale of St. Gwen. If you liked it, please give it a like, comment down below, subscribe, as that all helps the channel. And I will see you in the next one.